Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today I want to talk about how to find a vector function for a circle with radius 2 and center at this point for like the 1, 3. Also, we want the circle to be parallel to the xz plane. Um, what does it mean for the circle to be parallel to the xz plane? We actually really just saying that, okay, so it lies in the plane that's parallel to the xz plane. Okay, so how do we find this plane that's parallel to the xz plane that the circle lies in? Um, we can look at the y value for the center of the circle because this y value tells you that what plane that the circle lies in. In this case, as you can see, y equals negative 1 is the plane that the circle lies in, and that plane is also parallel to the xz plane. Okay, so let me draw a sketch to show you what actually the whole situation is. So I'm going to first draw the Z axis, right? So, and then we have the X axis, and then we have the Y axis right here. And then, so the positive Z axis, the positive Y axis, and then the positive X axis. Okay. So now since this is the positive Y axis, then on the other side of the XZ plane, then we have the negative Y axis, right? So let me draw the negative Y axis. And so that's the negative Y direction as this arrow is indicating. So if we have, let's say one on this side, right? Then on the opposite side with the same scale, then we are going to get the negative one, right? So we get the negative one on the other side. Okay, so far so good. And then now I want to draw the plane y equals negative one. And that's actually just a plane that's parallel to, um, to the xz plane, right? So let's just draw one. Okay. So I think it will just keep going in that direction, right? So it's actually not easy to draw in three-dimensional space. I often find myself drawing the, the graph that looks really off, but then I will just try my best right here. Okay. Yeah, I think that looks okay so far, right? And then, yeah, so this part is a little bit off right here. So how about this one? Yeah, so you can see that this plane is the y equals negative 1. It passes through this point right here. Okay, so now that's good so far. And the next step is to plot the center. Okay, so we plot the center, which is 4 in the x direction. So let me label the scale right here. 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we get the 4 here, and then we go up in the z direction. 1, 2, and 3. So that's 3. In the z direction so if we are to draw that right if we are to let's just plot that first okay so that's a little bit off by the way this is not even part of the solution right we actually don't even need to graph this but of course it will be a good idea to do this which will help and so and so what do we get here And so we are going to travel the same distance in there. So that's our point. That's our point. This is a center. This is a center. That's on the y equals negative 1, right? And then um, it also has an x value of 4 and a z value of 3. So now that's and a y value, of course, negative 1. So this is our center here. which is 4, negative 1, and 3. So right now, all we need to do is to come up a Cartesian equation in both x and z so that we can come up with the curve for the circle. And then we also need to specify the y value because y is a constant in this case. Because no matter which point that you pick on the circle, that point is going to have a y value of negative 1 right, because it lies in this plane. So now let's come up with that equation, which is x minus, okay, minus, minus the x value for the center, right, and then plus now z minus, what is that? That's going to be a 3, okay? That's the z value of the center, and that's equal to the radius square. Now we know that the radius is 2, so square, we are going to get 4, 
Okay, so that's our Cartesian equation, but we also want to indicate that y is always just equal to one. Because if you don't indicate that, then you are going to get a cylinder whose cross section is actually, uh, it's a circle on uh, uh, parallel to the xz plane. But if you specify that y is equal to negative one, that means you are only going to consider all the points on this plane. Okay, so that's the, the equation, but we want a vector function, right? We want the parametrization. So in this case, just like how you uh, come up with the parametric equations for a uh, circle in, in the parametric plane curves. In this case, we are just going to say that, um, we are going to say that this x minus four to be uh, two cosine t. And you may say, why two? Why do we have a two here? Because once you square, you get the four, right? And then do the same thing for the z minus three, then we are going to be getting two sine of t. Yes, so you square the two, you're gonna get the four. And when you factor the four from both sides, you can you can have the cosine square plus the sine square, which will just give you a one. So it will satisfy this equation. Okay, so now we, can start writing down our uh, parametric equations. We have x is equal to, no, actually it would not be x, it's x minus four. That's equal to two cosine t, okay? And then the other one is what, uh, no, not y, it's z, right? z minus three is equal to two sine t. And so now solving for both x and z, we are gonna get x to be four plus two cosine t. And then solving for z, we are going to get three plus two sine of t. Okay, and then of course, you also need to include the y as the parametric equations, right? And so right now we are ready to write down the vector function. So the vector function r of t, okay, it's going to be what? X component would just be four plus two cosine t. So we put that here. What about the y? y is just going to be negative one, right? Because it's a constant. And then now what is the z? What is the z? z is just this one. So three plus two sine of t. Okay, there's one thing that we should not forget. It's really just to uh, write down the domain for the t, right? In this case, the domain for the t because it's a circle. So it's a full circle. So we want to go from zero to two pi. Right, so that's how you can trace out the whole circle. And this is the vector function for a circle, radius two, right? As you can see, that's those are the numbers in front of the cosine and the sine. And that's parallel to the xz plane. Okay, I didn't graph the circle right here because I, yeah, so it's more difficult to graph the circle right here. But I just wanna show you the center and then you can imagine that the circle lies on this, uh, this, this plane right here, which is y equals negative one. Okay, so that's our final answer. To help me make math learning available to everyone, please share my videos to others and subscribe to my channel. It will give me support to make more videos. Let's work together to help students and children learn math more easily. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you.